first electrical project you do. We're going to talk a little bit more about series and parallel circuits, but before we do, I want to get you guys started on some electrical projects that are back to being individual projects. So this is not something you're going to be able to take home, but if I show you how to do it, you should be able to pick the stuff up and do it on your own if you like. Uh, but pretty much what we're doing is you're going to be wiring a power cord to an outlet that stays hot all the time, which means it's going to have power all the time. And then this switch will control the light that comes up here. All right, so you got a single pole, single throw switch. You're going to need two utility boxes and one fixture box and a piece of wood. Now, the wood I'm going to do it on is going to be this wood here because this is going to be one for the example that we're going to use later. So you're going to need some wire. You're going to need some boxes. You're going to need your wood, and you're going to need some tools. And the tools you're going to need for this, I would get a Phillips and a flat screwdriver. Uh, you can get a quarter inch nut driver, but I would prefer everybody to use the 516 screws. 516 so they were all the same. Because if you start getting a couple screws that are different, then you got to try and you know figure out what tools what. Uh, you're also going to need a pair of wire strippers, diagonal cutters, an electrical knife, and a pair of linemen's are good. And I can also use the crimping tool right here. So I got a crimping tool for the solderless terminals. Uh, and then eventually you're going to be utilizing the meter. You're also going to need some wire nuts, okay, different sizes, different colors. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and show you the screws you're going to need as well. You're going to need two 832nd screws. That's going to put the fixture, light fixture, on the fixture box. All right, you're going to need uh, four 632nd screws. That goes for the switches and the plugs. Now, normally when you get a brand new switch, they're already on it, but everybody's used all these switches before, so you got to kind of dig around for them. And then you're going to need uh, six. 516 screws, which are not the ones with the tapping. Okay, remember the tapping I showed you has that bit tip on the end, the AB point. We don't want that one. We want a standard point. Okay, and that's good. Uh, but it's the 516 head. It can be used with the flat. We don't want to use the flat. Flat's very difficult to use with that screw. You're also going to need the oval head, half inch, 632nd by half inch. That's for the cover plates. When you slide the cover plates on, some of the cover plates have them on it. So like this one here is still screwed on, so and that one's got one on it. All right, so that's an oval head, and then you're gonna need uh, the uh, open tongue solderless connection, and that's gonna be for when you're making your connections on your power cord here. Okay, so that's why we're showing you all that. So all the stuff, the hooks, the, all the stuff you've been practicing, you're gonna put to use. And the first thing you're gonna need to do is line up your boxes. Now I've got these Romex connectors. This is the last piece that you'll need because we cannot run the wire through a hole where it might vibrate or like say I just ran the wire here through this right without anything protecting it and it starts to vibrate around what's going to happen to that wire rubbing up against the metal eventually it's going to start cutting, it's going to start cutting into the insulation or first cut through the sheathing and then it will cut through the insulation on the wire and then if it's the power wire the hot wire it could cause a short which would spark it up hopefully it trips a breaker blows a fuse but it could catch on fire so we got to have some way to make sure that the wires secure and snug in there and that are these Romex connectors now don't take them completely apart they should have two screws with a piece on the top that you're going to use to lock in the Romex and then there's a body of it that has a lock nut on the back all right so when you're putting them together if the box has already got the holes knocked out all right then you can go ahead and just start putting them in even before you put the screws down because you got to make sure that you got enough room between the boxes for one there and one on the other side you know you got to make sure and then if you don't have the holes knocked out you got it these are called KOs you got to knock them out they're already pre-stamped with the exception of a little tab on the side and the best way to do it to knock it out and only do this if you need to take take it out like I, somebody's removed sides here and they didn't need to so I'm gonna take it opposite of the tab place my screwdriver on the top and just give it a quick boom and that knocks that piece where I can grab it with the lineman pliers and give it a twist. Now, what do these look like? Wow, oh, thank you very much. Circles, <laughs> yes, all right. But what else do they look like? What do you think that you might want to try and use that as? Yeah, a quarter for the vending machine. Don't put it in the vending machine, it don't work. It's not the same weight as a quarter, which is what they use, so it won't work. Don't try to put it in, it actually breaks the machine. It's not good. Don't put it in the vending machines at school, okay? So you're gonna have to knock them out if you need to. So I'm gonna need Two of them knocked out here. And then on the fixture box, there's two different holes. I got a three quarter inch and a half inch. 
we're going to want to do everything half inch. So make sure when you're putting your fixture box together that you got the half inch hole facing the half inch on the utility box here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the Romex connectors and use uh, six of these tap screws, right, to uh, go ahead and screw it down onto the wood. Sure, you don't have to have both screws all the way out, but put that right there. The lock nut goes on the back side. Sometimes there's a rough edge or an edge that's a, a tapered. You want the tapered to go out so the flat end, the, the flange end will go up against the box. This one here is not a flange end, it's just a nut. So this is the hard part for most people, especially when it's upside down to get it screwed on. And then you want to make sure the screws always stay up. So you kind of tighten it with your finger first. And then it's got these teeth on the side so that you could take it. That's loosening, all right? Take it like that. And now when it's all straight, I can knock it. And that makes it tight, okay? So it won't come out. Got to go ahead and do that for all of them. In. Now, I could run the wire first, but we're going to do one other thing first. Now, you remember that piece of wire I had you strip? All right, you're going to need about six inches of it. Everybody do this for me. Do this for me. You need six inches, six inches. Six inches generally for everybody is pretty much between the tip of your pinky when you do this action here to the tip of the thumb. Everybody hold it up for me like that. Let me make sure everybody's at six inches. Not quite sure. Do that. All right, now go. Let me hear it. Dude. All together now, one, two, three. Oh, you're not doing it. Dude. All right, you're like surfers, man. You're pretty good. All right, so dude. That's right, six inches right there. So you can cut that off, and then what you're going to do is I'm making a pigtail. Now, I'm only going to put pigtails in two of them, all right, and this is going to be for my ground. Everything's got to be grounded. If I wanted to check to this third prong right here, right, and I touch anything that's metal that's in this room, I should have it connected from this outlet and every other outlet in the building to ground. So that's what this is. So we need to make sure that we've got a clear path for the electricity. This is back to safety. A clear path for the electricity to go to in case something shorts out. So like if I'm measuring right here and I touch anything metal, like whatever it is, could be the roof, but look at that, it's connected up, right? That's all connected to a grounding rod that sticks in the ground four or five feet, sometimes deeper, especially if they use the plumbing pipe that's running 10, 15, 20 feet underground, the copper plumbing. But mostly they, they have a, a, a rod, a grounding rod that's connected to everything on that third prong. So that's a safety thing. So we're gonna make sure everything's bonded, grounded to this box. Now make sure the hook goes with the tightening of the screw. So I've done that there where I got my hook and I'm just gonna hook it around. And then that's why I left that one up so I can with this pigtail around it. Some of the boxes have a green screw that has a designated spot for the pigtail. All right, and that's that for that ground. I need another one for the other box here. There's another way I could have done this too, but for you guys with your first electrical project, we're gonna do it this way. All right, now I'm ready to run the wire. You will not get the power cord till I check off everything with the wire. We're gonna be using this 14-2, 14-2. And again, just like we did that for the bonding, you're gonna need that much wire sticking out of the back of each of the boxes. So I'm gonna run it this way. I'm gonna run one from here up into the fixture box and I'm gonna measure it out before I cut it. So I got about that much there, that's good. I want about that much here. Good. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and put these off to the side like that, and I'm going to go ahead and run another circuit from this box to the next box down in the middle. Same way, though, making sure I got enough coming out. By code, they say you need that six inches. Now, what do I mean by code? What do you know about code? Who knows? Who's the electricity students in here? The code book. Yeah, what is it? state code. It's all the rules, right? All the rules for what, because you can't just do willy-nilly this electrical stuff and hope everybody does it the same way. They got to have certain rules, and these are one of the rules that states have, and it's a national rule system, but states can make rules that are, or counties even, and cities can make rules that are even harder than what the national system is, and some states do, like California, 
Uh, there's a few others that make their rules a little hard. So I'm tightening down the lock nut on the Romex connector to tighten up so that this wire now, I don't want the wire being able to pull back and forth. That's not good. So we tighten it down, but you also want to make sure the wire's in the center of the connector. If it goes off on one side, you can pinch the wire, which will put the connector possibly in contact with the wire if it goes through the insulation. So like, see this one's a little offset. I'm going to make sure that it's in the center before I start to screw it down so it doesn't get pinched. And I do see sometimes where the students aren't paying attention and it cuts into the wire and their project either doesn't work or when they first plug it in, it sparks up. So I'll tighten both these down and then I got to remove the sheathing to expose the wire and that's about it for the rough in. We got everything roughed in, ready to complete the project another day. So we're going to go ahead and I'll take this electrical knife. Be very careful. Can't have any of this white sheathing beyond a half inch of the edge of the connection right here. So I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to show you up here first, but then I'm going to move it down maybe. So I take the blade and try and get in the center of the wire, just lightly running the blade. It's a little hard upside down. Up into this and don't cut yourself, okay? Because I'm just doing this upside down to show you, which is a little tricky. Normally I would do it and I always cut away from yourself like this uh, when you're not teaching, you know? So always cut away and then make sure you're not holding the wire like that or anything or nobody's holding it for you. But once you get that sheathing removed, you got, make sure you don't cut the wire. Two conductors, black and white, and our ground. You need the ground. So I pull all this cardboard and the sheathing away and I can either use the electrical knife or dikes, but make sure you see three things out sticking out before you cut. Because if you cut one of the conductors, you normally would have to run a whole new circuit and a whole new wire, but we can run a wire through that there. So I think we got this one too, right? We did that one. Let's pull this one apart. Run it against the clock. Now normally what we would do is if this was a house, we would wrap all these up, push them back in the box, and wait for the inspector to tell us we could move on with the next part. So I didn't screw that one down yet. But we're not in the house, so you guys need me to come by and take a look to make sure that you got everything the way it's supposed to be done before you move on with the next step. So I want to make sure that you got enough wire coming out, that your Romex connectors are tight and tight, that you got your ground, all right? And then I'll go ahead and I'll give you uh, so you got to use a single pole, single throw switch. Don't confuse it for this one. That's for the next project. That's a three-way switch. Use that, put that over there, and you need an outlet, 120 volt, uh, 15 amp outlet, okay? And then also you're going to need a light fixture. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with the light fixture up here at this top fixture box. So I need to put this ground. Now this is plastic, and it doesn't have anywhere else for a ground because it was made out of plastic. So we're going to just take the ground, and I'm going to put it right here on the box. The box needs to be bonded to the others but not a thing with the fixture needs to be grounded. So we'll go ahead and I'll just wrap this around that screw and tighten it down and then just push it down and I'm done with that one. I'm done with that ground. So we can just push it down in there like that and push it way down so it doesn't have a chance to touch anything else. Now for this one here, you need to know how much to strip even though I'm not using the switch in this one, I can use the, all right, or your thumbnail, whatever you want to use. But you could go ahead, now this is number 14 AUG. Make sure it matches up with the 14 AUG on the strippers. Strip your two connectors. Take your needle nose. I like the dikes myself. And you put the hooks on. All right, and then, look at this. I got two different colored screws, okay? This brass screw is tied to a rivet which goes in the center, which means this is the brass one that's gonna have the power 120 volts going to it. 120 volts. We don't want that coming on this outside ring because if you're screwing in a light bulb, all right, and your hand happens to touch the bottom of this ring here while you're screwing it in, 
you would be shocked every time you did. So the center one's the only one that has the power. This one here is what we call neutral. It has no power, and that's the silver screw. So black, black, brass. Black starts with B, brass starts with B. Black always gets the brass screw. White always gets the silver screw. So that's how I know which one to hook up to. All right, and if you take a look, I got two screws. We're only gonna use one of them, and making sure, again, the hook goes with the tightening of the screw. This is another thing I need to check before you put the box together with the fixture. All right, don't screw it down because I want to make sure you're going the right way on both that. So again, it's facing the other way. I go with the tightening of the screw. And the reason for that is because when the screw tightens it, it'll pull the connector, pull the wire into almost a loop, a circle. So see how much I got sticking down? When I give it that tightening action, it pulls it up. I actually pulled it up past the lip, so I'll take that and push it down. Screw it back together. So look, you had a lot extra, and now you see why we do it with the tightening of the screw. If you're not going to use the other terminals, make sure that they're just screwed in so they're not loose. All right, and now I'm done with that. So now I can find my two 832nd screws. I push this down into the box like that, and then I would go ahead and put the two screws in right there. I'm also going to do the switch. Now the switch, the single pole, single throw switch, black, two brass, two blacks. So I'm going to have these two go together. All right, and then I'm gonna have my two whites go together, but there's not gonna be a break on the whites. Whites are just gonna go, my neutral goes right from one side all the way up to the load, which is on that side there. So I'm gonna just tie those with a wire nut. These two are gonna have the two breaks here. And then, look, I got a green wire there, and I got all these wires here. So I'm gonna need to make another, another pigtail. All right, I got just enough to do one more pigtail for something else, so take that. Do this first, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and do my ground first, tighten this one up, and then I'm gonna show you, there's two ways we can tighten all these things together. One of them is using a wire nut, but you don't always need to use a wire nut with the ground when you're bonding, if you got enough of them. You can kinda, right, it's just the tooth that's getting me. All right, right there. Thought I had a pair of needle nose here. Somebody take my needle nose over here. To it. All right, so that's all done. So look, I'm gonna take all these wires, these grounds together. Got my pigtails. I'm gonna try and make them all about the same size. All right, I might have to trim a little bit, which I can. I'll just take it, trim it like this, and then once I'm gonna take my limes, I'm gonna braid it. It's not the same braiding as what you're thinking, where I loop one over the other. I just take them and I twist them together. And I just keep twisting with my limes pliers until almost they become a solid piece of wire like that. Look at that, that's pretty good. Now I don't need to use a wire nut with that one, but see all those little fan, that fan I got? I'm gonna cut that fan off. And we could, I could take a red wire nut and cap it off, but now I don't have a lot of room in my box for that. Plus this is just gonna get shoved down, and when they're braided together like that, you don't really need it. So we can push this down, I'm done with the ground. Push it down to the ground. So it's in the box like that, way down. Don't leave any of those ground wire, bare wire sticking up, because if they touch that side there, that's bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and also take care of my neutral, make those both the same, strip both these off, and I'm gonna get an orange wire nut to make the connection here. Now because I don't need, I could twist them together. I could do it like this again, where I use the Lyman's pliers and twist them and then cut it. You can also just use the wire nut. There's a couple different schools of thought on that, but you want to make sure that the insulation is not, bare wire is not below the nut, and insulation doesn't go up into the screw terminal. So I got a little lunch that I got to trim right here. And I can just put them together like this, and then tighten it up with a wire nut. And then I'll have to show you the rest on Friday. Well, Friday we got a guest speaker. Manin's coming. They're coming to hire. So if anybody's interested, uh, Manin. So I got a couple there. We're done with that part. All right, so now we got the ground in. We've connected up the wire nut, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and wire up the switch now. Uh, generally, you're going to watch the switch when it's on, up, so I'm going to go ahead and hook the closest one to this screw terminal. It really doesn't matter. You could have done this one to that screw, this one to this one. It's a, it's a switch, so it doesn't matter. It's a drawbridge. It's just going to stop the electrons from flowing from this side to this side, and it really doesn't matter which way you do it, but we're just going to keep it neat. I'm going to strip off the exact amount I need. And I could use the strip gauge to let me know how much I need. And I would advise you to use it. And then I'm going to make my hooks. And I could use the needle nose for the hook, just making sure to get the end and bend it around. 
or I could use the dikes for the hook, making sure to just grab the tip and not cut the wire. All right, and then I can go ahead and we can connect it up to these terminals here and tighten these up. Now it's got a slot for flat. I advise to stay with the Phillips. That'll get a better grip on the screw head with the Phillips than the flat. And then again, no bare wire below the black and no black insulation underneath the screw head. That's why these hooks are very important. So now that's it. So now I can go ahead and we're going to push this ground down all the way. We're going to push this one down all the way. Our neutral wire with the wire nut down into the box. And then we're going to sandwich this one up neatly so it can be lined up with the holes here. All right, and then I can get my screws and we'll screw those down. Now look, on these metal boxes, if you take a look at that other switch I passed around, all right, that other switch that I passed around has got these tabs on the side. So before I screw this switch down, these tabs are for drywall. They don't really need to be used for a metal box. In fact, if I had the tabs on, the cover plate kind of doesn't fit all the way it's supposed to. So to get these tabs off, you just take, there's a break right here, a little pre-slice, pre-punched cut, that if I take the limons and wiggle it back and forth right up near that cut, it'll snap the tab off, okay? So sometimes some of you might have the tabs, some of you don't. Depends on the switch that you're getting out of the box, but I just wanted to show you those tabs real quick before we move on. So now I'm ready for the outlet. So the outlet, again, I'm gonna have a ground here, ground here. I'm gonna need another pigtail here, but I also am gonna have a ground from my power cord that's coming out right in here. All right, so some of them are black and white, so you know which ones to hook to, the silver, white, black, brass, but not every one is gonna be black and white. So some of them, when you get a power cord, it will have something like this here. If I strip back the insulation, and I expect to see a black and a white and a green, but some of these are actual computer cords and they might not have a black and a white and a green. The sheathing might be quite difficult to get off because some of them might be insulated cable. But look, there's no, oh, I got a green. All right, so I know the green's probably what? Brown. Ground, yep. But look, oh man, I got a brown one. What does that mean? Is that close to black or is the blue one black? Or what, 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 how could I figure that out? Which way the plug's supposed to be wired up? Well, if you take a look here, right, on the outlet, outlet go let me get another one right there so if you take a look on the outlet because of this polarized plug it's got the uh, either some of them are fat on one side that won't let you put the fat in into the skinny end or they got the third prong here like this right so I could figure it out this way if I plug this in right and I take a meter now my multimeter the continuity that we were using earlier to check and show ground right so if I hit this one on ground, and I hit the green one, the green wire should beep. And then if I hit this one here, and I hit the, because it's on the silver screw, I hit the white one, it should beep. And if I hit this one here, it should beep. All right, so that's one way that we can confirm that these wires are connected the right way. And if you didn't have one like this one here, same thing, plug it in and use the meter, all right, you might have to strip back a little insulation, but use the meter to find out which one's what. And once you find one, if you know green's ground, all right, so if I figure out that brown's gonna be brass, which it is, all right, that's gonna be my hot wire. So I'm gonna make sure I hook brown to the brass screw if that's my hot wire, okay? Any questions about that? There's another one too that's not colored, looks like this, it's got, both are black. Now we're really messed up, man. Look, I got a ground. You know the green's ground, but both these are black. String them. Right, you could do the same thing where you plug them in. Probably could even follow it back on the side. Or they make a little tattletale. On these ones here, they might put a dotted line or a white line for the common one. Or they make a little groove here on this one. Feel that. Feel that right there. All right, feel this one. How's that feel? Smooth, smooth, 
Right? Smooth? Come here. Come on. You feel this right here. Feel this one right here. Feel that lip? Feel this one? Smooth? Yeah. Okay. Now look. Now the way I figured for you guys to remember it in high school, all right, if you see a hot girl and you want to talk to her, how are you going to act? You going to act rough or are you going to act smooth? Smooth. Smooth. Smooth is hot. Smooth is hot. Smooth is hot. Rough is going to be neutral or not hot. Not the one with the power. So this is going to be the one for white, the rough one, and the smooth one's going to be the one black, hot. Okay, so remember that. Smooth is hot. And they got some that have a little bit more ridges. Like this one's all ridged all the way around, right? And then this one's smooth all the way around. Rigid, neutral. Smooth. Smooth is hot. Hot. Right. Okay. So that's the ways that you're going to have to figure out for the power cord. And you're going to need to kind of put in the power cord for the ground. So we'll go ahead. We'll get that power cord out of the way. We don't need our meter for a second. We can set that aside. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my power cord in right here. And then we'll tighten it down on the Romex connector and connect up our outlet. And we are about done. Okay, look, hey. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and strip the wires back. These ones kinda need some new wire. So we are set with these here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do all our grounds first. So I'm going to need another pigtail for this one here. Which means I'm going to need another piece of wire. Stripped out. Hooked up. And now for this one, you are going to need a wire nut because you have a solid, a solid, a solid, and one piece that is stranded. So I could attach this to the box down at the bottom with a, one of these uh, solderless terminals by crimping it on. All right, so I could put the open tongue on and put it down there. Or I want you to practice putting one stranded with a bunch of solids. And the way it is is you're going to line them all up as best you can, trim all the solids even, and then after you do that, you're going to braid these up first. In other words, take the linemans, twist them together, and then you're going to place the stranded about an eighth of an inch above the solid and then put a wire nut over it. And this eighth of an inch above the solid, the stranded piece, is actually going to grip into the wire nut first. Right, so again, I take the, make it one, twist them together, and I'm going to raise it up about an eighth of an inch above the solid, and then I'm going to take a wire nut all right, and screw it on and that's how you're going to get the ground. Now look, you got to make sure to pull both the solid wires after you get it screwed on, the wire nut and the stranded. And if any of them comes off, maybe I need to get a smaller wire nut. So pull it. Ah, oh, it came off. That's not a good connection. Let's go ahead and get a smaller wire nut and try it with a yellow. All right, again, put the stranded about an eighth of an inch above and then tighten it down. And when you do, it should take that stranded and twist it around the solids and we're good. All right, so now that, that ground's done, I'm gonna push that ground down to the bottom. And I got two screws and two more conductors. Now for these here, you're gonna need to use the crimping tool. All right, and I'm gonna cut for the crimping tool, only a quarter inch of the stripped wire needs to be exposed for the crimps. And this is another reason why you're practicing it over there. So I just take this terminal, make sure the bare wire doesn't stick underneath. All right, and the insulation should go up about a quarter inch. And then this Lyman plier has a crimping tool 
as well. So I'm going to place it in here like this. Tooth's on the back, cradle's in the front, and crimp it down. And again, it should be able to hold 60 pounds, which is about the weight of the, well, not really the weight of the project. You're going to need two of those. One for neutral, one for hot. I'm going to go ahead and make my hooks here. And my brass is going to go over here. And the, usually the hot one is the smaller of the two. These are ready. I'll go ahead and push these down in. We're going to screw up the last two. So the fork will slide right between the screw terminals. See no bare wire? That's close, but not quite. Good. Underneath the screw terminal, tighten it down. And now we're ready to close everything up. So again, before you close everything up, let me check everything, and then you can go ahead. And you're going to need two eight thirty second screws for the fixture. You'll need four six thirty second screws for the switches. Look like that. And the outlet. All right, and I'm just going to put a couple of them in right here. And then you'll need the pan oval head screw for the cover plates. Right. Now look, I'm going to talk about something real quick. Now you see, I put this, and it kind of looks like it's upside down. This is actually the way they want switches, I mean outlets put in now. And the reason for it is because if you had some change, right? If you had, uh, I had a ring here. Yep, here it is here. Let's say you had a quarter and it dropped out and something wasn't plugged in all the way, right? That thing can come down now and what's it hitting? Which plug is it hitting? The ground. It hits the ground, bounces off, not a big deal. But if it's the other way, okay? If it's the way that you normally see it in your house and it's not plugged in all the way and something falls down, which is hitting now? Both the polarities, yeah, positive to negative, which is actually gonna cause a spark, and it should trip a fuse or blow, trip a breaker or blow a fuse, but if it doesn't, then it's gonna spark up, catch on fire. So they're telling now, put the plugs in with the rounding plug on the top. So you can if you want, you can put it the other way, doesn't matter to me, all right? I'm just showing you that because they tell there's a couple different uh, the jury's out on that, you know, there's a couple different scenarios for how that's supposed to be in the real world. But uh, most people just keep it standard. I see, a lot, I see a lot of electricians doing that unless it's a hospital. Next time you go to some place, though, a commercial business or something, take a look at the outlets, see which way they are. It's kind of a little experiment. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten these up. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the cover plates on. And then we'll go ahead and test it out. And I'll show you that the last little bit. Okay, so now you've installed the outlet, the power cord, wired up the switch, the light fixture, and we used the two 8.32nd screws to screw down the light fixture, 6.32nds for the outlet and the receptacle, and now you're going to go ahead and put on the cover plate, and we're going to use these cover plate screws, which are pretty much uh, uh, oval head, make sure they got the oval head on there so it recesses in. Some of them come with the screws already on it. So the switch plate will go up top, and cover plate, and the outlet will go down there, and 
control screwdriver is better, but this one will work. Now, if you're OCD, you're going to want to try and make these all line up. If not, it really doesn't matter. But some people like to make it look really neat with connecting it up. All right, and that's a finished project, pretty much. So you got to test it out. First way you're going to test it out is we're going to test to make sure everything's bonded. All the boxes are bonded to ground. So I'm going to put it on continuity, and we're going to use the meter to make sure it works. Third prong, everywhere I touch on metal should be beeping. So all the boxes are bonded. Connectors, both grounds, that's good. Now, we don't want it beeping when it touches either side for polarity on the outlet. That's good, no beeping there. No beeping there, that's good. And then it should beep if I test it this is neutral, and the neutral goes all the way up here without a break. Should not beep in the center, whether the switch is on or off. This one, though, my power hot lead, and then it won't beep up here until we turn on the switch. So we've tested the entire circuit. We're ready to plug it in. Once you've done that, then you can plug it in. And then you're also going to test the polarity with a polarity checker. Before you screw in the light bulb. So this is off, test the polarity. If two orange show up, then we're good to go. Two orange show that it's wired correctly. If you didn't have a ground or you had the wires, the black and white reversed, it would be a different setup. All right, and then test the light. That's it.